Welcome to this video on receiver operating curves. This video is going to be a very small one in a, in a part of our series on epidemiology and biostats. My name is Dr. Wahab Fazal and now let us get into it. The first question is why should we know about it? When do we actually use it? If you have watched my previous video in this series, you know that sensitivity and specificity are a trade-off. And this trade-off depends upon the cutoff on which you diagnose someone with the disease. And how does it let, let me explain this with the help of an example for example for diagnosing depression you usually need five out of the nine symptoms right five by nine symptoms and who told us this cutoff who said it's going to be five symptoms it's not going to be six symptoms or it's not going to be four symptoms for diagnosing depression this is where the re, uh, receiver operating curves come in for example, and I talk about this in my previous video so that for example, you when you decrease the cutoff, you increase the sensitivity and whenever you increase the sensitivity, the specificity goes down and the other way around as well, vice versa. So receiver operating curves help us visualize this interaction. So for example, when a researcher is trying to set a cutoff for a particular test, he knows what is the sensitivity he will get and what is the specificity he will get for a particular cutoff level. So this is just the illustration I used in my previous uh, video. So there you go. Whenever you increase or decrease the cutoff, the effect it has on the sensitivity and specificity is what we want to know in receiver operating curves. And this is where receiver operating curves come in. So we will understand both of uh, the, this receiver operating curves with very simple two examples. Okay. A new blood test is developed to detect early stage pancreatic cancer. Researchers evaluate the test's performance by analyzing the following data. So what's the data? At a high cutoff value, the test achieves high specificity, meaning for this specific cutoff, this test has a high specificity and low sensitivity. Okay. The area under the curve is 0 0.85. This is very important. An ideal test has area under the curve of 1. This is 0 0.85. I'm going to talk more about this and how receiver operating curves work. So which of the following receiver operating curves most accurately represents the performance of this test? Okay, so what is a receiver operating curve? So if you look at this graph, on the y-axis in a receiving operating curve, you have, you have sensitivity, basically true positive. So if you've watched my sensitivity and specificity video, I tell you all the time, the sensitivity is for diseased people. What sensitivity tells you, if you have sensitivity of 95%, that means 95 true positives and five false negatives. Similarly, you have specificity. Specificity tells you healthy people. So if you have specificity of 80%, that means 80 true negatives, it's for all healthy people and the rest are false positive. They're still healthy, they're just, they're just being labeled by the test as false positive. So what is one minus specificity? You have false positive. So you have sensitivity on the y-axis, specificity on the one minus specificity on the x-axis. So how it works is, so let's think of what would be an ideal test. What would be an ideal test? So an ideal test would be having a very high sensitivity, which would be somewhere around here, and a very low one minus specificity. Because when specificity is high, that means one minus specificity will be very, very low. Okay, that will be very, very low. Therefore, this would be somewhere around here on the x-axis and here on the y-axis. So you can say an ideal test is a straight line parallel to the y-axis as close as possible. Parallel to the y-axis as close as possible. So that is what an ideal test would be. And let's take, let's, let us draw an ideal test. This would be an ideal test. This, so what do we mean by area under the curve? Area under the curve is, let's assume this is a curve, then everything on the graph that comes under it is area under the curve. If you get the whole graph, if you get this whole thing, you would call that area under the curve of one. You'd call that area under the curve of one. For example, let us remove the ink and let's see some other curves and how they work. So if you have a curve like this, let us, if we assume to draw a line in the center, if we, if we draw a line in the center, this would, this would have an area under the curve because this is covering a graph of almost half. Let us, if we look at this line, this is covering the graph of almost half. So this line has an area under the curve of 0 0.5. If we know this is 0 0.5, 
and this is 1, this is 0 0.5, what would this be? This would be somewhere around 0 0.75, this would be somewhere around 0 0.75 and what would this be? This would be 0 0.5. So if we look at our example, our, our test had somewhere around uh, the area under the curve of 0 0.85. So that means it would be somewhere around here, right? So that's where our example would lie, that's 0 0.85. So when we talk about receiver operating curves, just remember this bare minimum information. You have sensitivity on the y-axis, 1 minus specificity, meaning as specificity will increase, the y-axis will keep decreasing. Therefore, 1 minus specificity on the x-axis, the ideal test would be as close to the y-axis as possible, closely hugging the y-axis, which would be this. Basically, and the area under this part for, a, for, a, for an ideal test would be somewhere around 1. So you want to get as much of the graph as you can. As you go downwards, this would be somewhere around 0 0.75 and this would be somewhere around 0 0.5. For our example, our area under the curve was somewhere around 0 0.85. So this would be that, 0 0.85. For the purposes of your exam, they will just give you a value of sensitivity or specificity and want you to think, for example, if you get a sensitivity of 90% and uh, that means 1 minus specificity of 10% and you get a sensitivity of let's say um, 80, right? So you get a sensitivity of let's say 80 for the purposes of your exam. So let's assume this whole thing is 100% over here. So 10% let's say would lie somewhere around here and 80% uh, would lie somewhere around here. So area under the curve, if you draw a point somewhere around here and you take a line from here. So you just have to pick this one particular line. Either they give you the sensitivity or the specificity, sensitivity and the specificity, or they give you area under the curve. Remember, a diagonal line in the middle of the graph is 0 0.5, a straight line parallel to y-axis would be, and then going like this would be one, and then you can make your pick. Let's take, let's understand this with the help of an example. Our favorite medical student, Mercurius, makes a new test called fine depression to diagnose depression by counting the number of furrows on your head. So he's trying to diagnose depression by looking at how worried people are by the number of furrows. So if someone has four furrows, maybe uh, Mercurius always comes up with something new. By counting the number of furrows on your head, this test has a sensitivity of 50% and a specificity of 50%. Choose the receiver operating curve for this test. Now, let me draw this here the sensitivity and one minus specificity on the x-axis and I want you to pick what would be the suitable graph. So the example what would be the suitable graph in this case is this one. This in the middle right in the middle of this receiver operating curve right in the middle of this whole graph is the line that goes 0.5 and 0.5. So if you do this and somewhere around this this is the representation that we use for 0 0.5. For the purposes of your exam, you just need to know how to get, for example, if we get a sensitivity of 20% and uh, if we get a specificity of 80%, how to make, what would a graph on this would look like? What would a graph on this would look like? And the other way they would ask you this question is they would tell you, you know, this, this curve has an area under the curve of 0 0.75. Pick the right one. Pick the right one. You just need to know 0 0.5, 1, it would be somewhere in the middle and then you would have a rough uh, estimate of what it would look like. That's all you need to know about receiver operating curves. Thank you so much for watching this video and in the end as always believe in your struggle, stay tuned and watch the other videos in my series.